We started out unit one, we talked about scalar quantities and vector quantities. Okay, why is that important? Well, you need to know how to treat certain measured values. Okay, um, you know, if you've got a, a problem that's got acceleration in it and it asks for final velocity, you gotta remember that vector and direction is important, okay, and you need to put a direction on your final answer. Unlike my period one science 10, who just wrote their physics unit exam, and not a single one remembered to put a direction on the acceleration problem I told them will be on there that would ask for final velocity. Not one. Downhill, all the way okay, but you've got to remember, vector quantities obviously have to have a direction on their answers, okay? So keep that in mind. Some of the stuff that we went over, okay, scalar quantities were things like time, distance, and speed. Okay, thus far in the rest of the course, we could also add to that work and energy, okay, as those are also scalar quantities. Okay, our vector quantities, displacement, velocity, acceleration, and we could add to that now as well, force, okay, being a vector quantity. Right, and then from there, we also did you know, some review of how to use V equals D over T, which I know is like terribly trying for everybody. Okay? Algebraically challenging and very difficult stuff. Okay. All right, so that stuff was basically all review from Science 10, but obviously still has a place in this course and could be on your final exam. Okay, so let me talk about V equals D over T. That could be speed equals distance over time. It could be velocity equals displacement over time. And if it's displacement over time, especially if you're looking at a position versus time graph, it could be final position minus initial position over time. Okay, either one of those will work. Okay, now obviously on your physics final exam, you are not gonna have a five mark problem about a V equals D over T question. Okay, that's just not going to happen, right? But you do need V equals D over T, possibly for a position versus time graph. Possibly, actually, definitely for a projectile motion question. Because the horizontal component of projectile motion is constant or uniform velocity, okay, where you have to calculate by using V equals D over T. All right. Um, then we went into graphing. Okay. And there's a fair amount of stuff on graphing. Okay. There's some graphs in the multiple choice okay. that would be mostly like interpretation or like super simple calculation kind of stuff. Um, and there's also going to be a graphing question in the written response, right? where you know, I give you a graph and then I ask you to perform some operations with that. So it could be like a position versus time graph with, uh, with the equation on there. It could be you know, y equals 5.7 x plus 2.4, and I might ask you to calculate some stuff about that graph using its equation, or it could be a graph that doesn't have an equation because it's irregular, okay? and you could be asked to calculate things like velocity, total displacement, total distance traveled, stuff like that. Okay? All stuff that we did way back in unit one, okay? and it was a long time ago, but okay? we did all of that stuff. All right, so if we're looking at okay, a position versus time graph where we have the equation, okay, the kinds of things you might be asked uh, could be uh, if it's a position versus time graph, for one mark, I might ask you, what's the velocity of the object? Why would that only be worth one mark? It's in the equation, right? The slope of the line for this graph is the velocity of the object, okay? Because when we manipulate it, it's final position minus initial position over time, y minus b over x, okay? So little things like that, not something you have to memorize. You could very quickly figure that out, okay? Uh, but it could be something that could be asked about. Or I could ask you, you know, um, what will the position of the object be after 200 seconds? Even if the graph only went up to five seconds, I could still ask that. You just have to plug it into the formula, right? Or I could ask you how long it would take to reach a position of 50 meters. And just plug it in and manipulate the formula. Okay, all that kind of stuff. We did lots of that. And it's exactly what I asked you to do on your graphing lab. Okay, it was the first lab we did in this course. Okay, that's exactly the kind of thing I asked you to do in the analysis. So expect that those are skills I expect you to still retain, and I will test on the final. Okay. All right. If we had a velocity versus time graph, okay, it could be you know a linear one where we get y equals mx plus b. What would m represent for that one?
Okay, well, let's kind of analyze it here. Okay, if I manipulate for m, it's the same as it was uh, up top, so m will equal y minus b over x. Okay, y would be my final velocity, b would be my initial velocity divided by time. What's vf minus vi over t? Right, the slope of that line would be acceleration. Again, it's not something you have to memorize. How long did it take me to figure it out? About five seconds. Okay, so it's not too tough to figure out. Um, or, okay, and, and of course, with a linear graph like that, I could ask you what's the velocity after this many seconds, or how long would it take to reach this velocity? Okay, and it would just be manipulation of y equals mx plus b. More likely, it would be an irregular graph. Okay, where I would ask you, you know, what's the acceleration between these two times? And you would have to use this formula. Okay? Or I could ask you, um, what's the total displacement? Right? If it's a graph like this, what do I have to do? Mm. Okay. We've exposed a hole in your armor here. Okay? Um, we, we, this is what we would do, okay? Um, displacement equals average velocity times time, okay? For this part of the graph where the velocity is constant, I would just take the height of this and multiply it by the time, the base of this. Is that ringing a bell now? Okay, for this triangle, the average velocity would be halfway between its initial and final. That would be the height divided by two, multiplied by the base, which is the time. So average velocity times time for each section, the triangle, a rectangle, and a rectangle. Okay, add them all up, and you've got the total displacement of the object. Well, I definitely review how to do that. Yeah. All right. Um, so that would be all you would have with graphing, okay? That's all we did, and that's all review of science 10. We didn't do anything new, okay, with position versus time or velocity versus time graphs, okay? But we did have an acceleration lab, okay, where you were asked to do this type of thing as well. It was for a linear graph, however, okay? But in that linear graph, you had a triangle over a rectangle. So again, I'm gonna ask you to show me stuff that you've done already, okay? Especially if it was a skill related to a lab. Then we'd definitely be asked to show me that again. Okay, acceleration, right? We went over a whole bunch of different acceleration formulas, all of which are on your um, formula sheet, okay? And will be on the formula sheet for the final exam, which incidentally looks like this, okay? It looks just like the one you got at the beginning of the year, except it says, well, it doesn't even say final exam on the top anymore. Okay, so that's what you got there, right? You got all the formulas that you could possibly need okay, for the entire course, plus the other useful constants like what g is and what the mass of the Earth is and the universal gravitational constant and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so everyone will get one of those on the final exam. Okay. Uh, so you'll have some problem solving, okay? Written response for sure, there'll be an acceleration problem, okay? There could even be some really, uh, a really simple one in the multiple choice, okay? All right, should you know kind of definition of acceleration as well? I would, All right? Now, acceleration is also part of projectile motion, okay? The vertical component of projectile motion is undergoing accelerated motion due to gravity, so you may have to use any number of the acceleration formulas on your formula sheet. The ones we used most often, okay, were um, A equals VF minus VI over T, the one we learned in Science 10, but we also used uh, this one a fair amount, okay, especially if we were calculating the maximum height of the object, we would use that one fairly often, okay, and there were times as well, especially for the horizontally projected projectiles, okay, where we used this formula. Vi times t plus one half at squared. We use that one for a moment as well. Okay. I mean, obviously, all of the formulas are game for the final. Okay, but those were the ones we used in projectile motion the most often. Okay, and then after that, we went into vector component addition. What do we need to remember about adding vector quantities? How do we draw?
Tail to head, right. Yeah, I draw the first one, then I draw the next one on the head of the first. Okay, tail to head, right, all the way along. And then I break them up into their x and y components. Okay, using trigonometry, I find how much they go over, how much they go up. I add the ups together and the overs together, okay, and I get my, um, my final resultant. Okay, um, so if we were looking at one like this, I'm just going to erase it and start it again just so we can kind of have one to walk through. Just because it's been a while since we did one of these. Okay, so add these vectors 10 meters at 30 degrees north of west and 12 meters south. Okay, so those are our two vectors. So I'm going to draw the 10 meter one, 30 degrees north of west. Okay, so um, north of west means I'm going to draw a line due west. Okay, and I'm going to go 30 degrees north of that. Okay, so this will be y, this will be x, and this is 10 meters. All right, and then our other line is 12 meters south. So I'm going to draw that tail to head. So I'm drawing the tail of the 12 meter on the head of the 10 meter one, and it goes due south. Like that. Why? Is scale important? Very important. Okay, that's pretty much to scale. All right, being that this side, y, would be 5. Okay, and I just know that because it's the sine of 30 is one half, right? So I know that this side would be five. So I need to draw this twice as long, actually a little more than twice as long. Okay, so scale is important. All right, so now I've got that, and that one is 12 meters south. So that means that my resultant goes from start to finish and would make a triangle that looks like this. You could have also drawn it this way. Right? I just like to not have lines overlapping in my diagram, but it's up to you how you do it. All right, so this will be R Y and this will be R X. Okay, everybody kind of remembering how the diagram goes? Okay. I have stand back that as you can all my lines are pretty straight. I stand back and admire that for a minute. All right. I need to find all the x and y components. So I'm going to find black x first. Okay? It's the adjacent side to the 30 degree angle. So what trig function am I going to use to find it? Which one? Cos, because it's the adjacent side and I have the hypotenuse. So I'm going to go cos of 30 degrees times the hypotenuse, which is 10. Okay? And that should come out to about 8.6 something. So glad I have this new calculator now because I can go back and steal all the numbers. I don't have to write them all down, okay. um, like I did before. So we got uh, cos of 30 times 10. So we got 8.66. That's all I'm going to write. I'll go back and steal the full number okay, later. So 8.66 meters, and that is west. Okay. Then I'm going to find the y component. It's the sine of 30 times 10. Okay, which is going to be five meters north. Okay, everyone with me so far? All right, finding the x and y components of the red vector is really easy because it's not angled. It's just due south. Okay, so the x component is zero because it doesn't go east or west, and the y component is 12 meters south. Okay, everyone with me so far? What's my next step? If I want to find my resultant, which is the green line and represents my total displacement, what do I need still? It, right, I need green Y and green X, okay, if I'm going to do that. Okay, I can get green X very easily because red X is zero. The only time I go east or west is in the first one. Okay, so it ends up being 8.66, just like this one. Black X and green X are equal. Right? If I had a vector that went back a little ways, then I would subtract the two. Okay? Or if I had one that went west, then I'd add the two. Everybody all right with that idea? 
Okay, so green X is going to be 8.66 uh, meters west. Okay, green Y, so uh, that's going to be black Y plus red Y, all right? So black Y is 5 meters north, okay, and um, red Y is 12 meters south, okay? So to get that, I would go um, 12 minus 5, okay? 12, I'll make south positive there. Okay, and we'll have um, seven meters south. Okay, there's our overall uh, green Y. All right, now that I have those, what do I do? Remember, I'm looking for this. I now have this side and that side. Exactly, use Pythagorean theorem. All right, so my overall displacement will be the square root of 8.66 squared plus 7 squared. All right, so we're looking at 11.135. meters, okay, and because this is a vector addition question, I'm also going to need the direction, okay, displacement's a vector quantity, so I need its direction, okay, I'm going to calculate theta using x and y, so that's the opposite and adjacent side, so I'm going to go 10 to the minus 1 of the x, which was 8.66, over the y, which was 7, okay, and that will give me my angle, so second 10, that number divided by 7. All right, so I'm getting an angle there of 51.05 degrees. Oh, that's cool. Okay, 51.05 degrees. Okay, and what direction is that? That's probably worth reviewing. Some of us struggle with that a little bit. It's west of south. Okay, how do we know that? Well, the arc is touching south and moving west of it. So whatever angle we have here is being measured from or of south. So this is west of south. Okay, could you have written it with that angle instead? Yes, it would be the complementary angle and it would be not south or west of south, it would be south of west. All right, so now that we've got those numbers, now we need to put it with the right number of significant digits, which is 2. Okay, so we're looking at um, 11 meters at 51 degrees west of south. Okay. Ringing a bell? That's probably one I would practice a few, okay, before your final exam. You've got tons of them in your workbook package with the answers there. Okay, the other place where you can get some of those questions is uh, if you go into your power school and you click on any of your quizzes. Okay, so if you go into any quizzes on vector addition, just click on the quiz and it'll, you can click on one link, it'll bring up the questions and the second link will show the solutions. And that was me recording me doing the question. All right, so you can, you can have some questions, try them and then watch them get solved. Okay, if you're really lost, that's probably a really good idea. Okay, is to, is to do that. You get a question to do, and then you can watch the solution step by step. All right. Um, any other questions on the vector stuff? Okay. All right, then projectile motion. Okay, so after that, we did projectile motion. Okay, and we did two types of projectile motion. Uh, we did uh, horizontally projected. So something that like runs off a cliff or runs off a diving board or is shot straight horizontally, okay? Uh, and then we had projected at an angle, right? So uh, something shot out of a cannon or something like that that was at an angle above the horizontal, okay? The principles of both are, are the same. The vertical component is undergoing accelerated motion due to gravity. The horizontal component is traveling at a constant velocity because there's no forces acting on it to slow it down or speed it up. a little bit and we'll go over a couple. The reason I want to go over a couple, the first question in the written response, final exam, 
project on motion first. Okay, so we'll do that one. Okay, so in this question here that we're looking at, okay, we've got something going off a cliff at 10 meters per second. It's going to hit the ground 20 meters from the base of the cliff. Okay, we want to calculate the height of the cliff. questions was to write down our givens, but we had to break it up into the horizontal givens and the vertical givens. Okay? So from a vertical perspective, it doesn't seem like I'm given very much. From a horizontal perspective, I'm given actually quite a bit of information. Okay? So horizontally, I know the velocity, because this thing went horizontally off the cliff at 10 meters per second. That's the speed it's going to move at horizontally until it hits the ground. All right? So V, horizontal, is 10 meters per second. The other thing they told me is how far it traveled horizontally. It hit the ground 20 meters from the base of the cliff. So it only traveled 20 meters horizontally. Okay. Since I use V equals D over T for the horizontal part, what can I calculate? Time. Is that going to be useful? Definitely. All right. So I'm going to calculate that right now since I have enough information to do it. Okay, so T is going to equal D over V, right? So that's going to be uh, 20 over 10, which is going to be 2.0 seconds. All right, so from a vertical perspective, I can now write that. The time is 2 seconds for both parts. Okay, what else do I know vertically? I know the acceleration. Okay, what else do I know? I know one more thing. How fast was this going vertically at time zero? Zero. Because it went horizontally off the cliff. It wasn't moving up or down initially. So the initial vertical velocity is zero meters per second. All right, I'm trying to find the, the height, which is essentially a vertical distance or a vertical displacement. Okay, so I'm looking for D, and I've got T, A, and B. All right, I think the formula I want to use is this one. A, I have T, and I have VI. So I can use this formula, I have everything that's in it, and I don't even have to manipulate it, it's going to solve for D. Okay. So that's going to mean um, that's zero, because VI was zero, right? So I can just cancel that part off, and all I have to do is go one half times 9.81 times 2 squared. Okay, so. 0.5 times 9.81 times 4. Okay, so it's going to fall 19.62 meters. Okay. Are we all right with that? All right, so that's a horizontally projected projectile. The other kind of projectile, which I scroll up, was projected at an angle. Okay, that only had two significant figures, so um, I did screw that up a little bit. You know what? I'm just going to start this whole thing over again. Pick some new numbers. Okay, so let's say I've got this situation here. I've got, um, I don't know, let's say a ball thrown at uh, 25 meters per second. 
30 degrees above the horizontal. Typical projectile motion question would ask me to calculate two things. What's the horizontal distance traveled and the maximum height of the object? Okay, those would be the two things it would ask me. Okay, that's all the question has to give me in order to ask for those two things. Okay, so same as before, I want to write down my givens, vertical and horizontal. Okay, from a vertical perspective, I know this. That's the only thing I know right now. The rest of it I have to calculate. Okay. So, since this thing is shot at an angle, it has a horizontal component. Okay. And a vertical component. Right? When it's first shot, it's moving up and out. So I can calculate those two numbers because I've got the hypotenuse and the angle. Right? So I'm going to calculate first uh, VI. Right? So VI is the opposite side to this angle. So to calculate that, I'm going to go sine of 30 degrees times 25. And I'm going to get that VI is positive 12.5 meters per second, or 12.5 meters per second up. I want to do the same thing for the horizontal part. Okay, the horizontal velocity is not going to change, so I don't have to write that it's vi. Okay, it's going to be constant, and it's the adjacent side. So I would go cos of 30 degrees times 25. Okay, so 21.65 meters per second. I have a little bit more information. I'm looking to get the horizontal displacement and the maximum height. Okay, what else do I know now that I've calculated VI if I'm dealing with the whole flight? I know VF. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't outright tell me this, but I have to assume it, that the landing point and the firing point are the same height. Okay, So then that means that VF and VI are, the, they're equal but opposite in direction. Right. Okay. So VF is going to be negative 12.5 meters per second. All right. So now that I have VF, VI, and A, what can I calculate? T. Yeah, and I'm going to want that. So T is going to equal um, VF minus VI over A. So that'll be uh, negative 12.5 minus 12.5 over negative 9.81. Okay, so that'll be uh, 25 divided by 9.81. Okay, so my time is 2.55, well, 2.54 seconds. Okay. I'll go back and take the actual number okay, when I'm doing any other calculations. All right, can that time be used over there on the horizontal part? It can. It's the one thing that fits for both. Okay, so the time is going to be um, 2.54 seconds. Hey, okay, can I calculate D now that I have V and T? Okay, so D equals V times T. All right, so I'm going to take uh, that number multiply it by that number. All right, so it's going to travel 55 meters horizontally. Okay, is that ringing a bell? The other part of this is they want me to calculate the maximum height of the object. Okay, so one of these numbers here that we've already calculated is going to change when we're talking about the maximum height of the object. How fast vertically is the object going at that point? Zero, right. Okay, so we've got to change that. Okay, so now we know that VF equals zero. We still have VI. We still have A. We're looking for D. 
So now we're to this formula. Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2AD. We're looking for D because we got everything else. All right, so we're going to have Vf squared minus Vi squared divided by 2, uh, 2A, two sorry, equals D. Okay, so that'll be 0 minus 12.5 squared okay, uh, divided by 2 times negative 9.81. So I forgot to make the 12.5 negative. I should get. I should have gone zero minus that. So this is actually just positive. Seven point. Net, seven, actually, 8.0 meters is going to be our maximum height there. Okay. Hopefully that's ringing a bell. Okay. That's exactly the kind of thing I would ask on a final exam, say on the first question in the written response. All right, that's what's in unit one. That's what's in the kinematics unit. They would count as a vector addition question. They are not the vector addition question. Is that a nice big hint? Okay. Okay. So the question was, are there, is there basically, is there a bulk question on the test? Okay. Just vector addition. What else do you want me to go over from unit one here, guys? Could you do a graphing question? Graphing question? Okay. Um, okay. Give me like three minutes to build a graph to put on here so that we can do a real one. Which one would you prefer, position or velocity? Velocity. Velocity versus time? Okay. All right, so while I'm getting a graph ready, okay, um, I posted this morning in Google Classroom your final exam review package. It's only two pages, okay? It's got an outline, which we kind of went over this morning for unit one already, and my plan is that we'll have one day for each unit, okay? Uh, so we'll do that for each unit, and then um, on the second page is a bunch of old exam written response questions, right? So you get a pretty good idea of the kind of thing I'm going to ask, okay? So it's something from every unit there. You may. Okay, so why don't you guys work on those, and I will get um, I will get a graphing question built here. All right, so we got this velocity versus time graph. I would probably ask you to. I probably wouldn't give one that had this many parts to it on the final exam. Probably would just be like two parts, but just so we get to practice some stuff. Okay. Uh, one of the things I might ask would be, what is the acceleration between uh, seven and twelve seconds? Okay, so if I'm asking that, okay, what's acceleration between 7 and 12 seconds? Well, acceleration is final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time, okay? Uh, so my final velocity is negative 15, okay, minus my initial velocity, which was 10, right? And that took 5 seconds, so we're looking at uh, negative 25 over 5, negative 5 meters per second squared would be our acceleration over that time. Okay, so that would be something else. Uh, another thing I might ask, um, what is the total displacement over the whole trip? All right, so in the first part here, okay, between 0 and 2 seconds, the object travels at a constant velocity okay, of um, 4 meters per second, okay, according to the graph. All right, so if I want to calculate the displacement during that time, I take the average velocity, 4 meters per second, and multiply it by the time, 2. Right? So this part is 8 meters. Right? And then uh, I've got um, these other shapes here is, I think, what I'm going to go with. You could draw this actually a number of different ways as long as you calculated the total area under the line. Okay? Um, so for this uh, box here, okay, I've got a height of 4, and it goes from 2 to 7 seconds. So uh, that'll be okay, um, 20 okay, meters. 
and then I've got this triangle here that has a height from four to 10, so its height is six, and it's uh, three seconds, so three times six is 18, over two is nine, okay? And then I've got this uh, rectangle here that also has a height of six, and it goes from five to seven, okay? So that one's gonna be 12 meters. Okay. This triangle has a height of 10 and a base of 2, okay, so that's 20 over 2 is 10 meters. And then I've got this triangle here okay, that goes from 9 to 12 seconds, so a base of 3 okay, and a height of negative 15, uh, so that's negative 45 over 2, negative 22.5 meters. Okay, everybody all right with that? Obviously, I would want to see the work. Don't do it in your head on a final exam, okay? Um, now that I've got all of those, I simply have to add them up. Okay, so we've got 20, 40, 49, 59, okay, minus 22.5. Okay, so we're looking at, what, 36.5. Okay, um, so something like that. That's what I would ask you, okay, for a velocity versus time. Like okay? And at least if you're, you know, if you've practiced that and you're really on the ball, that didn't take very long. Right? We drew a few shapes, we did a little bit of multiplication, and we did a little bit of addition, and we were done. Right? Obviously, on a final exam, I wouldn't give you one that had that many shapes. It just take too long. All right, what else from unit one? Give you a little more. Do you want a little bit of time to kind of look at stuff from unit one before you decide what you want to ask? How about I do that? Okay, you guys have a little bit of time. Okay, go over some stuff from unit one. Maybe look at the final exam review package. Okay, something like that. Try a couple. Of, look at the problems that I put on there. Okay, see if you know how to start them. We basically gone over everything that I would test in terms of a problem already. But okay, if you got something else, I'm happy to help.